my name is Nicole Jaspard. I'm an empath and paranormal investigator. I am also an author of a dozen books. Thank you for listening to Haunted Real Connections, where I'll bring you the best mediums and paranormal people the field has to offer. Stay tuned for another great show on Paranormal King Radio. Guys, welcome back to another edition of the Haunted Real Connections with your host Nicole Jaspard here on Paranormal TV Radio. And tonight we have another awesome guest. She's been on here before, uh, Glenn Jolly. Hopefully, I said her name right this time. Yep, you did it. Also, I've been watching the Curse of the Lazy Morning. So, uh, of course, I have a few questions about that. And uh, and we have live radio chat. I forgot to ask you if you see the chat or not. If we, if I saw the what? If you can see the chat room or not. The radio the, chat room. The chat room. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't. Let me see. I, how do I get there on the link? So the picture? Yeah. And see what yeah, happens. where you scroll down and you see chat mm. and then you put your name and you're in. Do, 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 do. I want to say hi, everybody that's listening. King, George, Terry, and thank you all for listening. And of course, if you have any questions, just let us know. Like I said, I had a few questions up my sleeve. <laughs> Never mind, my sinuses and the toe don't help out either. <laughs> oh, no. It's almost that time of year over here. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. This weather is crazy. <laughs> Well, you're, wearing, <laughs> you're wearing sweaters in California, and I'm like wearing a tank top in Massachusetts right now. So, oh, you want to trade? <laughs> yeah, it's wicked warm today. It was like 65 or something, right? Which is really warm for February over here. Maybe yeah. we switched weather. You did, yeah. I was like, I never seen a sideways rain before. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. And the rainbows. That was cool. But anyway, since uh, you last been on this show, um, you're also, you're also uh, an author of uh, Dead Whispers, and you uh, and you do like ghostly and EVPs, right? Yeah. Would you like I to talk a little EVP. bit? Uh-huh. Would you like to talk a little bit about your book? Sure. Uh-huh. I'm on yours. <laughs> um, Dead Whispers was actually published. Uh, geez, I don't even know. It's been a while now. I've been working on some other projects. But um, when I wrote Dead Whispers, it was more because no one that I knew personally, like my friends and stuff, could hear my EVPs. I would, you know, capture these great EVPs and then I'd, you know, Ask my friends to listen to them, and they'd be like, "Oh, sorry, can't hear it, Luann." And it it kind of drove me crazy. And at the same time, I knew, you know, there's so many people out there who, <laughs> you know, want to be paranormal investigators. So I wanted right. Red Whispers to be fun, and I also wanted to find a way to like highlight the EVPs so that basically anybody off the street could hear them better. And right. ever since Dead Whispers, that's why when I cut my EVPs, I always have it repeat three times at the end, just the actual EVP. Uh-huh. So, you know, that actually I found to be really successful. I had a lot of people that I used to experiment with different things with the audio and putting that loop that three times at the end where they could hear just that EVP, it helped like focus them on it and everyone that I worked with could hear the EVPs when I played them that way. So oh, wow. that was kind of like dead whispers was like the writing was fun, 
you know, in um, writing, you've you've written a book yourself, so yeah. you know writing is work. <laughs> you have to be dedicated. You have yes. to, you know, be able to do it every day and all of that. But there were like hundreds of hours put into the CD oh, that wow. comes with the book because that was important to me. I wanted, you know, all the enthusiasts out there who want to be able to hear EVP to hear the EVPs and then read the book and feel like they were on an investigation with me and my team. Right. And also that leads to my next question. I noticed when you were on the case of the, if I may um, ask, uh, you were working with Dave Schrader and Chris Fleming and uh, the curse of the Lizzie Borden, right? And I noticed how you not only captured some pretty creepy EVPs, there and uh, you also you also what I like was how you actually reversed the audio and you got even more another message. Do you want to explain a little bit about that? Well that's funny because sometimes when I was working on, you know, cases with my team, I'd come across these E V Ps that were just odd or didn't make any sense when you played them forward. And I don't remember if I had read an article or if maybe me and someone else in the paranormal were talking about reverse EVP. And one day I just came across like a weird EVP and I was like, you know what? I wonder if this says anything backwards. And I think, um, like a, a good example, um, one that I can think of because like I have thousands of EVPs on, you know, my hard drives <laughs> and so, so um but it, it was a, a negative case. And oh, wow. when you played it forward, it was like, Don't think you get to party or right. maybe that was the backwards <laughs> part. Oh, no, that was the forward path. Don't think you get to party. And it's like, what the heck is this ghost talking right. about? Like, <laughs> we're not here at a party. We're here because this person thinks that there's something negative in his house. So we're investigating. We're not partying. But then you take it and you reverse it. And remember, right. it sounds like the little boy's voice, right? Don't think right. you get to party. And he's all cute and sweet and everything. <laughs> and then you turn it around and reverse it. And it uh-huh. says, we come to get you people. And it's still a sweet little boy's voice. No, that's serious. You know, it's like there was a hidden message in there. Like, you well, know, yeah. all these other investigators had gone to his house, you know, and it's hard nowadays because there are a lot of teams out there. You know, but yeah. some of the cases that those teams are walking into, they're not prepared for. So, you know, these investigators right. <laughs> came into his house and they treated it like a carnival ride. And that's a thing I say a lot, that there are some people that are out there going into people's houses. And for them, it's a game. You know, they're going in there. Oh, yeah, we got EVP or, oh, we did it. Or, oh, shit, we're scared. We're running out of this house and leaving these people right. with a problem. All they hear or is evidence. They not made the problem help. worse, you know. Yeah. So that's what that spirit was telling us. Don't think you get to party because we right. come to get you people. There was definitely a message, you know, or um, there was a negative case, like one of our first negative cases that Will and City Ghost uh-huh. took on. And can I say B I T C H on the radio? Um, Not really sure. Although it's internet radio, right? I don't think they checked that. Well, anyways, you played this thing forward, and it it was like so cocky. And I know it was kind of referring to me because I was with the homeowner doing the interview for the case. Right. And the entity is like. Oh, wow. Bitch. Now, think about that. Oh, if I just had chills. Bitch, bitch, bitch. Shouldn't it be chib, chib, chib when you reverse it? Right. Well, you reverse that one, and it was exactly the same thing. Bitch, bitch, bitch. Oh, jeez. Like, it's not possible. <laughs> I actually sat on my computer. Like, I did the, 
I'm a good daughter, which I can do it better. I would have been that one, yeah. I got shields. And then I took my own voice and I reversed it. And it was like noise. Blah, 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 blah. It didn't make any sense. But yeah. when you take that good daughter EVP that they played on the Curse of Lizzie Borden, you reverse it and it, it's a woman in distress saying, my daughter was right. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, she I heard that. Was, was there, you know, I really feel like a lot of the EVP that came out of Lizzie Borden's house and probably still does is because of the entity that we kicked out. You know, when Chris and Sam and Dave were all there with me. Right, I was going to ask you about that too. <laughs> you know, but the thing is, is, you know, as long as people are going into that house and wanting to get you know, activity, get some evidence, that spirit is going right back in that house. I can't, there's not really anything I can do to bless or clear a place that's a right. public place where people keep going expecting activity. So, you know, for all I know right now, I haven't been to the Lizzie Borden house since the show, but, you know, they are still using it as, you know, a paranormal hub. People go there and pay money to investigate and, you know, do haunted tours and things like that. They bought the house to make money off of it. So they're going to rent it out in any way they can. <laughs> right. And they can't guarantee what people are doing when they're in the house. Like I say, they could be in there summoning things for all we know. Right, that's true. Which is sad is I think a lot of spirits just need help. It's like, I feel that they're trapped there, you know? Yeah, it's funny that, I don't know, like, over the years, like, I have been doing this a long time. I don't want to, you know, share my age or anything like that. But, oh. you know, I, I have been doing it for quite a few decades and all of right. that. But, um, <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, is that every spirit kind of has its own story and, Right. what made it stay back and to me you know there's some basic reasons you know you love something so much that you can't leave it behind you know that's a pretty good reason right are there attached you to the place or location or, you know exactly kind of falls under the same heading they love that house so much it was part of their life you know since they built it with their own two hands they right. they love that house you know um religion i think is a tough one for a lot of spirits because they feel like they did bad things they're afraid to cross over they're like oh crap if i cross over i'm going to hell i'm staying right here right, right. You know? and a lot of times they say unfinished business and like those i think are probably some of the toughest ones along with suicides because right. the suicides stay behind a lot. There is a suicide um, in the New Bedford Armory that was featured on uh, Ghost Hunters years ago, huh. like early 2000s, I think. And um, you might remember it. It was um, the one where the camera guy, not the camera guy, the sound guy, his um, sound equipment is like in this big box kind of type thing that hangs off his shoulder. Oh, and wow. Thing like, it's like the spirit grabbed it and just took it and smashed it into the guy's face. Oh, jeez. You know, he's a suicide. And they're going in there. And, you know, I don't want to speak badly about, you know, what they were doing. And right. I think they were still kind of a young team at the time themselves, too. But, you know, they were kind of provoking him. Huh. And... He was the first sergeant in the building. You do not provoke him. He is the commander of that armory. You know, uh, you go in there, you treat him with respect. And I never had a bad experience with that ghost, but I knew a little bit about his story, that he had committed suicide in the building. And, you know, I've been trying to find... um records on him because he told I'm trying to remember I have that in my notes um it was Kuzak or something like that um first sergeant Kuzak or something like that Kuzio or oh 
um, I'd have to pull a file to remember the name okay. right now. But I, I was trying to locate him and find out, and I found something that could be a misspelling, but that someone broke up with him. Huh. You know, um, he was engaged to be married, and the proposal didn't go through or something like that, or I don't know, maybe his, his fiancé died, or... There's too many files yes, kicking uh, around in my head. To, but, you know, yeah, no, I've been reading um, chat, so sorry. You know, if if he killed himself inside that building, um, you know, he's sad. He committed suicide. Yeah. I, I it seems to be gently. It seems to be like a lot of murders there, not just like one or just a lot of tragedies there as well. Oh, definitely. I mean, there was a thing that really, like, kind of gave me this uh, epiphany kind of type moment. I'm sitting like at the end of my driveway waiting for my grandson to get off the bus. And I'm kind of looking at my phone. I'm not paying attention. I'm sitting on like, there's like this brick thing down there that all of us that, you know, have to go down and get kids will sit on while we're waiting. (laughs) I'm just sitting there and all of a sudden I hear this big loud crash. Boom, 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 boom. And oh, the wow. truck goes by, and I and it crashes onto the side of the road. But as it's all happening, something like whizzed right over my head, and I'm like, "What huh. the hell is that?" And then this tire comes down. This big, huge dump truck tire comes down and bounces Whoa. away from me, and I'm like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> the wheel of that truck just came flying off the truck whizzed over my head and the truck just crashed like right in front of me it's like if that thing would have hit me in the head i'd be dead right here oh wow i wouldn't even have seen it coming i wouldn't have known what happened i would probably be sitting at the end of the driveway for the rest of eternity you know i never knew it hit me where's my grandson's bus you know i probably wouldn't even you know and and that takes me back to my near-death experience, when that happened, I didn't know I was dead either. Well, you know, I had a few close calls. I don't know I'm dead, and the truck tire did hit me. Ooh, that's a scary thought. But yeah. There's some <laughs> questions popping up. There's questions <laughs> popping up in chat. I better get to. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, there's Adam, the historian, those hunter in there. Hey, Adam. Uh, he says he's been to the Lizzie Borden's house, too, and he says... Uh, Someone else died in the house like 50 years ago, he read. Yep, yep. That yeah. was, um, what was that guy's name? Um, I should have my Lizzie Borden file open for these, huh? Um, yeah, there was somebody who was living in the house, and I I think it was a boarding house for a little while. And oh, wow. I can't remember if he was Jimmy or David. Um. It might have been Jimmy because David I have recorded in the house a few times, but I don't know who he is. Right. Although I kind of have a feeling I might know who he is, but I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, someone else did die in that house. And um, there was also a flood. And that's why um, none of the furniture in the house is original anymore because um, most of the furniture got destroyed in the flood. Oh and I wow! Think there too. I really do have a lot of case files in my head, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he also wants to know, uh, you know, have, have you been to the Salem, Massachusetts? How can you live in Massachusetts and not go to the Witch City? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we did actually do an official investigation at the Salem and the captain Nathaniel West house. And that was really cool. I mean, we got a little Portuguese lady asking us how we are in um, Portuguese. Um, and just, it, it was an experience. It was like when we were there, oh, it's it was my best the list. Of <laughs> again. And um, we kind of had a film crew with us. <laughs> So it's like, I feel like when we were there, everybody in Salem knew us. And it was like, oh, wow. I'd go up to get coffee in the morning, you know, which we were staying at the West House, um, the Salem Inn. 
<laughs> and everybody would be like, hey, Luann, how are you today? It was like, wow, I love this. <laughs> I saw. But yeah, so which city's great. Yeah, definitely on my bucket list. And, and the Lizzie Borden house, of course. Also oh, on my bucket list. <laughs> You're way over on the other side of the country. Right, and uh, he has a question. He wants to know if uh, who died in the house before he murdered a family. I think that's the Lizzie Borden house. At the Lizzie Borden house? Um, I believe so, I'm yeah. I'm not sure about that because they um, they actually lived at a different address before they bought the home on 2nd Street huh. and then moved into it. Lizzie was, you know, a bit older when they actually moved into that home. Um trying to remember. It might have been 72 or 74 when they bought the house, but they had been living there for, you know, maybe a decade before the murders happened. Or they were um, saying the house next door, too. Um, yeah, that actually, um, that case was called The Murder in the Well. And um, right. Eliza Darlin Borden, who was a Borden by marriage, um, right. she went down in the cellar cistern and drowned two oh, of man. her children. Uh, I think they were two and four. <clears throat> um, one daughter, Mary, did actually survive and grew up to marry um, oh, a wow. chase, I think it was, off the top of my head. Um, you know, of course, moved away and all of that. But um, after she had murdered her two children, she went upstairs, took her husband's straight razor, and sliced her own throat with it. That's sad. Yeah, and they, um, you know, because I've never felt like um, spirits have, like, borders. Like, oh, this is my house and this is what I haunt and I can't go anywhere else if I don't want to. Because I'll tell you, when I hit downtown New Bedford, uh, oh, my God, I think every freaking ghost in New Bedford downtown came to the location I was at to, because it was incredible. Um, the first building oh, that wow. we actually investigated was uh, the Gallery X which was the first huh. Universalist church going back to uh, 1815, I believe. Um, and it was just like everything. There were people with English accents. It took me like months to go over the evidence because you couldn't get through like five minutes without going, oh, shit, was that another EVP? Oops, and I just said the S-H-I-T word. <laughs> it's okay, the worst. Um, sorry about that. I think it's okay as long as I don't say the s <laughs> <one>, right? <laughs> but it, it was incredible. It, it was like every few minutes there was something else, you know. Um, one of my investigators is playing with the REM pod and making it go off, and he does it like, two or three times and the ghost has like this wicked English accent. He's oh, a wow. simple rock <laughs> and it was like, wow, and they've stolen our horses and all these weird different things and like going back to the Native Americans and I think like if huh. they wanted to, they can go anywhere. You know, so oh, that yeah. kinda happens to me though and I, I'm still trying to figure that out. I've been trying to figure out since I was I was really just gonna ask you and my ghosts love me so much and talk right. to me so much but I think you're like a you spirit know. magic like myself who when we had a kid yeah. and they would see yeah. that. And uh see I, I love was, that. I I uh, like to have ghost magnets on my teams. Um uh, feel free to give shout outs if you want. <laughs> what was that? Feel free to give your team a shout out if you want or or anything I do want to give shout outs to. Well, in City Ghosts, yeah, yeah. in New England <laughs> since 2004. That's awesome. Kinda on our shirt. So. <laughs> well, shout I want a shirt. Oh, you want a shirt? They haven't come in yet, though. Um, uh, I'll take there one. There was a problem with the printing, so they actually they felt so bad that I hadn't got my shirts that they sent me like free ones right around Christmas. Oh. But, their equipment broke, so I'm like still waiting for my will. I wear stuff. large. I made a new logo. <laughs> I had like years ago made the ghost Moby, and you know there were people telling me that it kind of looked like a sperm. <laughs> oh, wow. So I was like, well, I don't want to have a sperm on my shirt, especially when we're like an all-female team. So 
I like, I don't know, last spring or something like that changed his design. So he looks more like a humpback whale. Oh, Mm -hmm. which they're very prolific around here. I've been on like whale cruise. Yeah. Whale cruise is what you call that, right? We all got something like that. I was going to ask you something, and, I think. I've asked you this before, but uh, has anything ever followed you from uh, Lizzie Barney's house? From Lizzie's? Um, that's hard to explain because uh-huh. me and Lizzie Borden's, like, have been kind of, like, attached ever since I went there. Like, I don't, I mean, like I say, I've been doing this a long time, and I grew up with an attachment that followed me everywhere I moved and, you know, lasted 22 freaking years and everything. So you want to share when I learned how to protect myself in my home, I'm, you know, pretty adamant about getting it done. You know, I try to keep my all your life is seen like. Yeah, they do, you know, they do get in every now and then. I, yeah. I don't think it's something I can avoid, you know. Um, things happen, people get busy. I might let my guard down a little bit or, you know, um, when my son was living here, maybe he would bring somebody that would bring something in with them or, you know, you don't always have control over what happens either. You right. know, that's why, you know, being scientific about the paranormal field is so damn hard because, I try desperately to follow scientific method every time I go out in the field. And at the same time, I can't say, oh, my environment's going to stay the same because I can control my environment because I can't. Every house is different. Every patch of woods (laughs) is different. You know, every, even every graveyard is different. So, you know, it's not something that we can control. So we always have to be, you know, ready to, kind of swing another way to... Especially being a spirit mm-hmm. magic or ghost magic, we have to protect ourselves like 24-7. Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, there's nope. just a couple like more questions. 90% of it is guesswork, really, right. if you think about it. <laughs> I see a couple <laughs> more questions for you uh, from okay. Adam. He wants to know, have you been to Maplecroft? Maplecroft was actually part of the Curse of Lizzie Borden's. Um, Our schedule kind of changed because the circumstances in the house were changing as we were there. Oh, wow. Um, You know, the first, like, few days, all we dealt with was equipment failure, you know, and that's probably why, you know, there isn't an EVP every five minutes because... (laughs) my recorders kept going out, my video cameras kept going out, and, you know. Yeah, they kept draining um, everything, huh? So we only got to be in Maplecroft on the very last day of filming, so, you know, there's not a real lot of on the house in the show, but I will tell you, I loved Maplecroft, and that's where Lizbeth lives, you know, um... Wow, yeah, I've never heard of it, so. You've never heard what? I'm Maple Prop, I haven't heard of it yet. Yeah, no, it's beautiful, though, like. Oh, wow. If you come in, it's, you walk in, and it's this big entryway with the spiral staircase going up to the second floor, and of course, it has a third floor that's all finished, there's a big, beautiful music room, like, right as you walk into the right. And there's a piano. I'll be like, can I play the piano? There's a piano in there. <laughs> a piano. You know, and it's just, it's, it's really a beautiful house. You know, even the kitchen, it's it's kind of retro and so cute. It's, oh, wow. it's an amazing house, you know, from the time you walk in through the door all the way to the third floor to the smaller bedrooms and things. It's Is it like just, a uh, Victorian style? I'm trying to picture it. Yeah, it, it's um, it's a Victorian, I, I would call Those it. Those are my um, favorites. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's like you could probably fit four of the Lizzie Borden houses in it. You oh, know, wow. the, the smaller house on 2nd Street, you could probably fit four of them inside Maplecroft. 
it's big and it's beautiful and she paid way more than the asking price and ticked off all her neighbors. <laughs> they were afraid they So it's like a it's like a mansion. So they, a mansion Pre- yeah, it's mansion. Pretty close <laughs> to a mansion. That's cool. And there's another question for him before I lose it. Uh he wants to know how many people died in Bridgewater Triangle. Hmm. I'd probably say millions have died in the Bridgewater Triangle over the years. Um, Oh, wow. I haven't heard that either. (laughs) I mean, the Bridgewater Triangle is like 200 square miles, give or take. And I actually feel like the triangle is a lot bigger than like what that little map shows. Um, But I mean, people started dying in the Bridgewater Triangle like, what, 50 years after the English settlers came over here to America? So, I bet there's you know, some... if you count all of the deaths of uh-huh. that war and, you know, it, it's... And, I bet there's you know, some um, paranormal activity well, hotspots there, too. <laughs> yeah, it, it would be hard to say there's just, there's so much history here and then the Revolutionary War that was fought here and you know, uh-huh. a lot. Let's just say a lot of people have died here. <laughs> <laughs> well. But, yeah, the Bridgewater Triangle has actually been kind of a big part of my research. You know, I try to, whenever we're, like, kind of slow on cases or whatever, I'll try to get us out somewhere, um, whether it's the Freetown State Forest or Anawan Rock or I have, like, just these weird little places out here where I go and you know within the triangle you practically could go anywhere and record EVP to tell you the truth that's just oh I bet yeah there's ghosts everywhere and if you're a ghost magnet they're gonna find you oh yeah <laughs> you know there's there's just too many layers of history and and that kind of fascinates me too when you've got a location where like for instance I was just talking about downtown New Bedford the Whaling City. That's why we're Whaling City Ghosts, because right. the history here is amazing. You know, when we go downtown, we get the Native Americans who were the first people here. We get the English settlers. We get right up to modern times where someone's going, tell Lisa, I'm always with her. You know, oh, and wow. people talking about drugs and things like that. But, you know, um, it's it's layers and layers and layers of history on top of each other and it's like oh, in I bet, some yeah. cases, <laughs> these ghosts are communicating with each other like I have a house in Dartmouth that I go to every now and then to see you know it's like I call it a research house because you uh-huh. go there any time of the year I've been there every time of the year around solstices around equinoxes around full moons like different conditions and I always wondered about that what was that I always wondered about that is that certain energies from the from those uh, storms and well, it, it probably had <laughs> um when I go out on investigation I do a weather check humidity um relative uh what do you call it humidity uh dew point uh, what the moon cycle is, if we're having any solar flares, because right. every time that I document that stuff, you know, I do notice that, you know, solstices and especially equinoxes are busy, you know, and I believe it. <laughs> if you have enough people producing the same data over and over and over again, we're going to start to see patterns like, right. um, the spirit, you asked me if anything ever called me home from anywhere, well, not from Lizzie's, but, you know, m- me and that house were going to be attached until I broke the connection from Anvilo because right. <laughs> Anvilo doesn't like me. Anvilo doesn't like what I do. And that's you the know? Uh, dark entity there, right? I yeah. Been... Yeah. You know, and I, I, I mean, even the people... Who, well, I know those guys have been in the Lizzie Borden house before, but, you know, they don't live here. Well, Sam lives, um, although I forgot, was he in Salem? I think he was living in Salem or close to Salem. 
during the show, but, um, you know, most of these guys huh. don't live down here and they come into the house and everything kind of turned around because like they kind of helped break the connection that I had with that house oh, because wow. I knew like there was never going to be anything that I could do about it. Or so I saw, you know, um, I knew that in that particular case, if I ever went into Lizzie Borden's without my guard up, you know, that one would probably follow me home. Oh yeah. But, that's the um, dark as it is. Know, there was an instance of a spirit following me home from Freetown State Forest, and I know that's where I got it because the activity started, like, almost right away. And every time the activity started, and here's the weird thing, we were in the forest on the full moon. And oh, then wow. every time the thing would get active, and I mean it was active, it would whip stuff, it would appear as an apparition, um, you know, um, water, like, apparated out of air and landed on my son and his girlfriend watching oh, the movie in wow. his room. You know, I how did chills. that happen? I went and I checked that room, like, where's the cup of water that they spilled? Because they came in and they were all wet. And my kid's like, ma, uh, somehow something threw water all over her. And they're oh, wow. The clothes are wet, the hair's wet, you know, I can see they're wet. I'm That's like, crazy. they're playing a joke on me or something. <laughs> so I go in the room, I search in the room for like a bottle of water or a glass of water. Nothing. Wow. Well, like, you know, how the hell does that happen? But like in the water. Time, the moon, <laughs> every fan time of- the full moon came, I knew there was going to be activity in the house. And that sucker took like wow. three blessings to get rid of. And normally oh, when Waylon Jones does a blessing, it's one blessing. Right. And that's it. So my house, oh, three blessings to get rid of the free time state forest thing. Probably strong. Oh, it was. Like, you know, you don't, I've been doing this a long time. You right. don't see things getting whipped around all the time. You don't see physical manipulation of objects all the time you don't hear audible voice phenomenon you know it it was doing things that you don't see all the time every full moon well thanks buddy (laughs) i did see a few more questions before i missed me yet uh adam wants to know have you been to uh ask her about if i can say it right uh Lewis Chester, Massachusetts, or Dalltown? Where is that? Uh, Dalltown is Lewis Chester. Did I say Lewis Chester's in Massachusetts? Winchester? Mass- Massachusetts. Uh, I'm I sorry, like yes. I was trying to the chat room because then I could. I know, I'm not sure if I pronounced it right. The name before that was uh, Lou Star. How do you spell it? I uh, lose, lose, start. Let's say, <laughs> yeah, these sinuses don't help either. Uh, G as, where was it? I keep missing it. Oh, Gloucester? Yeah, there we go. Ah, there we go. Gloucester, you've got to be from Massachusetts to pronounce that word. Glou- Gloucester. Okay. <laughs> hey. We have some really weird names for things out here. Okay. I apologize <laughs> about that. <laughs> Yeah, um, I have actually been to Gloucester. Um, I don't think I've ever investigated anything up there. Um, it's very close to Salem, though. All of that is really beautiful, historic, like seaside. Oh wow! Beautiful towns, and Gloucester is another uh, fishing port, like New Bedford is. So there are a lot of similarities, and all of these places were attacked by you know, the British when we were in the Revolutionary War, so more deaths and possibility for more ghosts. Well, I'm going to have to do some research tonight. <laughs> um, yeah, he- oh man, if you go down that rabbit hole, there is so much going on over here, and even just like Lizzie Borden's, like, uh-huh. you know, I researched Lizzie Borden's, um, I have an unpublished manuscript about it. It's actually a historical fiction, so it's not true, 
but I use all real history. So I researched my facts for like three years on, you know, the oh, Lizzie wow. Porter case. Not to mention the research that I've done for, you know, paranormal things, stuff like that. Right. And, you know, so I there's a lot like, of history. I don't like to be called an expert just because I know I always have more to learn. I, I yeah. wish I could soak it all in, but I've always you know, learned people <laughs> say I'm a Lizzie Borden expert. But then again, whenever I, you know, start digging into that case again, I find another fact that I didn't know before. It's like these these historical cases out here, like you open it, it it's literally like opening up a can of worms because right. you, you'll you find yourself finding out so many other things that you didn't know. Like even my own area, I, I've been learning, you know, Wampanoag by the spirits that I meet. That's a lost language that no one really knows anymore because they weren't allowed to speak the language when they lost the war. They had oh. to speak English. Oh, you know, wow. um, the only way that they're actually reviving the Wampanoag language is through the Bibles that the English gave to the Indians to make them Christianize. So there right. are actually Bibles written in Wampanoag, and that's how they're trying to preserve the Wampanoag language. You know, and we're oh. going back to, you know, uh, 1676, so wow. it's been lost that many years. All right, I was going to say, um, if you're just tuning in, um, I'm talking to Luann Jolly, paranormal investigator, and uh, you can also listen on Mitzler.com, or you can hold a listen at 631-359-9046. And I believe I see another question from King. Uh, is there still Satan at Rachel's there? Um... Well, there's a lot of controversy about that since um, there was a documentary that came out. Um, I believe it was just called Far River, and it's talking about the cult murders, and they're calling it Satanic Panic, and I kind of felt after I watched it, um, you know, they did have a lot of facts in in there that were true. Um you know, I got to see some of the people that I was researching, things like that. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think that it was Andre Maltes in my house anymore. I think it was Sonny Davis, and he was a scary guy. I'm glad I kicked him out of my house. But oh, wow. <laughs> anyway, you know, they do this big documentary about the cult murders, and they tried to make it look like the whole country was under satanic panic and... You know, they were a self-stylized, um, I think that's someone else's words, but that they weren't truly a satanic cult. Um, and they weren't affiliated with the satanic church or anything like that. Well, uh -huh. I'm sorry, but if you have a bunch of people going out in the woods, performing satanic rituals, sacrificing freaking animals, stealing skulls out of mausoleums, that oh, makes them cult. That was a cult. And yeah. maybe it wasn't a true satanic cult. They were kind of doing their own thing. But they were using this cult to intimidate the prostitutes that they had, you know, that they were pimps of, you know, and one of the women um, who ran, I believe, ran the cult, Karen Murphy, I think she's coming up for parole again. Oh. Um, uh, you know, I kind of think she was the leader. And she's trying to say, like, she was this innocent girl who, um, you know, was forced by Carl Drew to do all these terrible things. And she wasn't really there and blah, blah, blah. And I've spoken to people who knew her when she was like 15 years old. Pimps were scared of her. Everybody wow. was scared of her. She was She's like a witch or something. Bragged about the satanic cult. You know, these people were vicious. They, you know, what kind of person puts a prostitute on the street, anyways? Oh wow! Well. You know, they're not nice people in the first place. But they get this cult going, and that's the thing. 
maybe people were having satanic panic or whatever because people panic about things. But I guarantee you, I know people personally who were ritually abused by satanic cults. Oh, well. You know, um, and I have a few of those throughout the country that told me, you know, and I believe them what they told me that the cult uh-huh. did to them. And as little children, for God's sake, and their parents are in this cult, letting this stuff happen to their kids. You know, not yeah. just abuse, sexual stuff and, you know, feeding them blood and things like that. It's It's horrible. But the thing is, you know, a lot of these satanic cults or cults, whatever you want to call them, are not really affiliated with the satanic church. The, that's a whole thing on its own. But you've got a lot of sick people out there. And you've got big yeah, the woods, yeah. like the florist. You know, can we go out there and monitor? You know, uh, I think it's like the forest is like 6,000 acres or something like that. How do you monitor that? How do we know there are not people going out there? And they might just be screwing around. Oh, ha, ha, ha. We're a satanic cult. We're going to go tip over a few cemetery stones and go in the woods and drink pig blood and, ha, 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 call up demons and stuff. And sometimes I think it works. You know, 99.9%, it's just a big joke and nothing happens. But that 0.1% where you have people... You know, um, there are black witches that, you know, do bad things. There are white witches, too, you know, but you have enough people going to a location. And, you know, for some people, the forest is a joke. You know, think of like some stupid teenagers going out there and, oh, let's perform a satanic ritual where the cult did it. You know, they don't want to do that. I, I will. I will warn people about that. There is some stuff. When it gets dark in the Freetown State Forest, that even scares me. And I am scared of nothing. So right. <laughs> if anybody wants to go try to conjure something up in the Freetown State Forest, don't do it. <laughs> right. So, It'll be you know, more than a poltergeist if you be dealing with. <laughs> right? Oh, there's more than a poltergeist out in that forest. <laughs> you know? When we go out into the forest, we are like so protected and we try to protect each other out there, you know, right. and I've had to take one of my team members at one point, I actually had to take her out of that forest oh, because wow. it was not good for her, you know, and I didn't want to see anything happen to her. So it was like, you know right. what, <laughs> enough for tonight. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that forest has given me some of the freakiest EVP you ever want to hear. You know, um, it's not oh, a I bet, yeah. yeah. The forest can be used by Yeah, especially one time I got lost in the forest and that wasn't fun. <laughs> well, no, you don't want to get lost in this no. forest. People have died. I don't know how I made there. it, but I'm here. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Yeah, I was just like, we have a two-hour show. He's really interested about when we're talking and everything. Let's see. Uh, anybody else have more questions? I think we still have some time. And, or if you want to um, share anything you'd like to share, um, like any more shout-outs or anything like that. Oh, are you still there? Yep, I'm still there. I thought you oh, were going to ask me a question. Oh, I thought I lost you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, I heard you say question, and I got on ears. Oh, I, uh, if you want to share anything, then let us know, um, you know, anytime. Oh, definitely. Uh, I still have my question. You know, you know me. You get me <laughs> on talking about ghosts, and I'm like a motor mouth. There's just so much here, you know. Um, oh, no, that's why we wish we had a two-hour show. <laughs> <laughs> it would take more than two hours to talk about all the paranormal stuff going on in my neck of the woods, I'll tell you. Right. Uh, Adam wants to know if you have any uh, alien jerseys. I have actually seen 
Or monster. A really cool UFO. Um, actually, it was three of them. Um, it was I years you out ago. Here. Yeah, I bet. I bet you do. Um, I think if I were out more at night, I might see more, but because um, yeah. they seem to be getting really friendly lately. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm out on Onset Beach um, with my two sons and my grandson was just a baby back then. And my daughter-in-law and we're fishing and stuff. And he has a boat over there and we're out on the beach. And while we were on the beach, the um, Cape Verdean Festival was going on, like in Onset Center, they call it. Um, uh-huh. It's like part of Wareham. It's it's really a quaint little village. You got to go out there in the summertime. But uh, we're on the beach, and I look up in the sky, and I see these three. It they almost looked like those mylar balloons, like silver uh-huh. mylar balloons, like three of them in a triangle. And I'm kind of looking at them, and like I guess I talk to myself a lot. I'm like, are those balloons? And my son's right behind me, and he's like, Ma, look, those aren't balloons, because one of them took off that way. Oh, wow. And then it comes back, and it goes right back into the triangle position. And I'm, like, looking at my son. My son's looking at me. And then all of a sudden, all three of them just went so fast, you could barely even see it, and they, like, took off. And I'm like holy crap, we're standing here on the beach with a whole Cape Verdean festival going on behind us. And there's like UFOs right in the sky. What the heck? The wind wasn't blowing that hard. And I mean, they just went at an unbelievable speed. Like I've never Uh, seen any kind of craft move that fast. Yeah, the one I tend to see, they're kind of like uh, orb shape, you know, round shape. But I haven't seen Triangle ones yet, but I've seen the orb shape one out here. Huh? Yeah. Are they silver? They're more, yeah, silver metallic. They're almost Cause that kind clear. of sounds like they, they were like three separate orbs, uh, like little round silver. That's why I thought they were balloons, and I'm like looking at them, like, hmm, three balloons shaped like a triangle yeah, in the sky. And no sound. How's that possible? Yeah, no sound, nothing. Even right. when they took off, or like the first one took off and then came back to the triangle, like no sound at all. It was right, like, and they take off quite quickly too. They move like real fast across the side. Is the second. <laughs> yep, yep, it's incredible. Weird though. I've been dreaming about aliens lately. Hope they're not gonna abduct me and put well, me not. or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Man, actually, I haven't I seen it, it lately. Was just dressed or something, but <laughs> no, I hope not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, maybe if they're abducted, they'll give me like a free ride. If they're you friendly, know. I'll be like, "Baby, I'm sorry." Yeah, I hope they're friendly because the ones I've been dreaming about are not friendly at all. Oh. They're like laughing everything, and we're like looking for food and the debris and stuff, and. One comes overhead and everybody's like, play dead. And you all lay down and play dead. It's like, right. yeah, I've been having some really weird I hope they're here to help us. Is, you know, <laughs> I hope so, We too. need more help. <laughs> Definitely. Well, the funny thing is, is like, I know a lot of people who are into UFOs, which I uh-huh. am very interested in. It. I just don't really have the time to research that on top of the whole paranormal thing. But, um, right. You know, they say that there are a lot of different races and oh, yeah. that some of them are warlike and the and ones that are not warlike are kind of protecting us from the ones that are warlike. And I don't know if I go that far, but I do believe that, you know, there has to be other things out there. I mean, we've got this gigantic universe. Right. And we're the only ones. And the ocean. And the ocean hasn't even been... Explore, like, and think about that. You know, the universe <laughs> has been around for like billions and billions and billions of years. So I think it's very possible that, you know, another 
planet, maybe not like Earth, but, you know, right. enough to sustain life could have, you know, started billions of years ago. And I mean, every planet kind of has a death date because when the sun that, you know, <laughs> the planet orbits around and creates life and warmth on that planet, um, sooner or later it's going to, you know, supernova or die or, you know, our sun's going to die someday. And we need to figure out how to get into space, too. You know, I I think it's very likely that some of these aliens are looking for another home like we would have to do. Yeah, possibly. They want to take over our home, but, you know. Oh, no. Well, no, body snatchers, what I hate. You know, that, <laughs> that kind of drives me for the paranormal, too, because, yeah. you know, you can't limit yourself to the science that we have on Earth right now because there That's is true. that big, giant universe out there, and everything in the universe is connected to everything else. So That's why I always keep it open mind. mind. Yep, all of those mysteries of the universe. We ain't got crap for science. Oh, he was sharing your Whaley City Joe site on our radio chat so they can see where they find you and everything. So oh, cool. Yeah, yeah thanks, I love you as well. Awesome. So if there's anything else you'd like to share, I know we got like a few minutes left for the time, though. <laughs> a few minutes left. Um, they can find me on uh, Facebook. Uh, my name, Whaley City Ghosts, is on Facebook. Uh-huh. Um. I have an author page that I am going to start paying attention to as soon as things calm down over here with right. the grandson and all that. Um, uh, I hear you. Did I say whalencityghost.org? I don't remember now. I think you put um, it up there it for you. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, if you've got a problem, shoot us an email. And Unless you live in California, because that's a little out no, of our range. No, I'm my way. <laughs> you said it my way. <laughs> oh, good, good, yeah. I'm out here in California. Too. Awesome. That's, that's, that's how we all connect, you know. Yeah. We, we, um, you know, we share our stories with each other. You know, there's so many good people out in the paranormal field. Right. You know, I'm willing there, to help. There are a few help. crappy ones out there too. We all know about that. But you know, the the ones that you know are trying so hard to get unity. Right. I'm not sure if they'll get the kind of unity that they want, but the unity is already happening because, you know, paranormal investigators network with each other. They work together. They help each other out. They communicate, yeah, you know, like, hey, I'm Louie I'm in Massachusetts. Oh, well, you know, I got a case over in Massachusetts or, you know, hi, I'm Nicole and we're good friends and I'm over here in California. Oh crap. Well, I got somebody who needs somebody out in California. So we're, we're kind of already working on that unity. Right. At least I, I think so, you know, and I think like sooner or later people, uh, you know, right now as we speak, learning more and more about the paranormal and I think oh, you yeah. know, the bad eggs will sooner or later get weeded out. You know, and yeah, I deal with a few. I'm always like, <laughs> yeah, there's still a lot of good people in the field, and right. you know, every every field has a bully or two. Yeah, you know, was, you yeah, I want to mention baseball. Um, was about the Warren Foundation too. They're all yep. willing to help. They have members from all over the world. They help yep. cases. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And, it's uh, a good field to be in. And of course, Adam sharing his show. He's going to be talking with uh, Tony Sparrow uh, February 25th. So that'll be cool, Tony Sparrow on Adam's awesome. show. And uh, of course, I want to mention my guest for next week. I believe is Ryan. He's a. Uh, I, I can't ever say this right. Cryptozoologist. Uh, Cryptozoologist. Cryptozoology. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. You have to practice in front of a mirror I'll and try laugh at practice. Face. I almost said it right. But yeah, he does a lot he about Bigfoot and everything. And I always say, I don't know what would happen if I had um, Bigfoot encounters. I might either run or faint. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm used to dealing with ghosts and you know, things like that. 
<laughs> but I think, yeah, so thank you so much for me on our show yeah. again, and you're, you're always welcome back. Thank you, anytime. You know that. Oh, thank you. Every normal peeps go to I know you're busy. <laughs> but keep up with your work, and hopefully uh, there'll be more shows, and you know, that um, unless you bought it or whatever you'll be working on. That'd be cool. I, just I would actually love just to do a Bridgewater Triangle one and oh, hit yeah. all of the spots. And that would be like a, a five hour movie, though. There's just too much. Oh, I bet. <laughs> you no, know, even just the two hour thing that we did, The Curse of Lizzie Borden. Right. There was way too much to fit into that little tiny two hours. We were there. I for was a just going to ask real quick. Um, were you guys going to do any more episodes, or just, just that one? That um, one? I know that the guys were kind of talking that they want to put the team back together again, but I uh -huh. mean, that could be just talk. I don't know. Right. Well, I hope it works out. Well, if somebody calls me up or sends me an email, I'll let you know. Yeah, that, yeah I'll definitely look forward to it. <laughs> awesome. Say hi to David first for me, even though I haven't met him yet. <laughs> I sure will. Uh, you all have a great and safe weekend. Thank you. You too. Thank for your time and everything. Thanks for having and, uh, me. This will be played on Anchor and Spotify later on. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you, Luann. Have a great night, guys. Thank you so much. You too. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Bye. Good night. Bye, guys. Hi, my name is Nicole Jaspard. I'm an empath and paranormal investigator. I am also an author of a dozen books. Thank you for listening to Haunted Real Connections, where I'll bring you the best mediums and paranormal people the field has to offer. Stay tuned for another great show on Paranormal King Radio.